Chazaki show on the trap. It's too sweet. Anyway, I almost missed this. So I feel the need to do this one first. And how I almost missed it? Well, it's simple. My phone didn't give me the notice. Otherwise, I'd have had everything already ready for this. But today, the Canadians finally narrowed down their choice and selected their 18th general manager in club history. Let's talk about it. So remember, the GM position in Montreal has been vacant since November when they fired Mark Bergevin. We did a video on it. Oh, there. And since then, Jeff Gorton has been burning the midnight oil, according to reports there to believe, looking for not just any general manager, but a general manager who's bilingual, because Montreal demands that kind of thing. And I can understand why. But out of everybody they talked to, everybody they had in mind, they chose Kent Hughes. And who's Kent Hughes? This guy. Now, I know that doesn't explain much, but the important thing to remember, actually the most interesting thing in all this, he has no formal general manager experience to speak of at all. He comes in as a former player agent who has managed to be the agent for guys like Patrice Bergeron, Sammy Blaze, Chris Letang, Anthony Bavillier, Darnell Nurse, and even Vincent LeCavier, just to name a few. Now, he's not the first agent to go on to be a GM. I know he's not the first, he won't be the last, but you think of guys who were player agents who became GMs. First name that comes to my mind, Pierre Lacroix. Did it really well in Colorado. Brian Burke is another one. So there is a history of agents making the crossover, and it's probably the best thing for an agent to be a GM because A, he knows the players. B, he can negotiate with the players. And C, if they're playing hardball, he can choose not to negotiate with them. But B and Hughes and Gorton have had a previous relationship from New York. I don't think that makes the world a difference, but it definitely helps. And it's got to be a good thing for a team this deep in the season, like Montreal, given their standings right now. It's probably the best thing to look forward to. So what is there to look forward to? Well... I think being at this point that I'm recording it right now that they are last statistically in the NHL. Best thing to look forward to now is a rebuild. There's no way they're making the playoffs, much less repeating their success from last season. I mean, we all knew that was a fluke anyway, but it's beside the point. <laughs> now they can actually build a competitive team, hopefully. I mean, the hole filled by Price and Weber and the fact that they didn't really do much to fill those holes automatically told you they were going to have a bad time. But now they can correct that. And if Hughes is as outside the box as Gordon and all the higher-ups in Montreal want to think, this could be a great thing. It could actually be a good team again. We're not even at that point yet. You know, trade deadline is fast approaching, yes. And you might see them active. Hard to say. But, just hoping things can turn around for Montreal, because they really, really need it. So that was another one of chess hockey shows. I want to thank you for tuning in. Don't think I don't appreciate the gesture. Especially if you're right here. It's a great thing for both of us. So, since you've made it this far, give me a like. While you're at it, if you haven't done so yet, there's that big red button that says subscribe all over it. Hit that thing. You know you want to. I want you to. And subscribing makes you feel good. 
because he can never beat that. All my socials in the description down below. Moving forward, I'm thinking I want to do my thoughts on the season at the halfway point, since it is coming up. So if you want to see that, let me know. But either way, in the meantime, in between time, good luck for you to some Trev. Later.